watching Talk Your Musings. And I'm back from a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I had a birthday week the week before. And to be honest, I've been feeling a little bit of a fall slump. I feel like since the move, um, there's just been a lot of hectic energy. And I've been riding on the hecticness for a while now. And now that I finally feel settled, physically in the move, I feel like I've been having a hard time actually settling enough to feel like I can really enjoy the books that I've been reading. So to combat that, I've done what anybody would do in this situation and I went to my library and I overwhelmed myself with options to get a fresh start of reading. Um, as we go into the winter months. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a fresh dirt haul for the later fall slash winter seasons. So hopefully I can get the end of the year and beginning of the year started on the right track. So the first book that I'm gonna talk about is Patrick Ness's A Monster Calls. Now this has been on my TBR for a while. Allie from Allison's Pages has talked about this book as being like kind of a necessary read. It's a coming of age story about a young boy who interacts with this monster. And it's a, really a, a tale about grief and loss and kind of a mental health story. And I'm always on the hunt for YA and really interesting YA stories. So I'm looking forward to dipping my toes into that book. The other book that I picked up is Ali Smith's Autumn. Now this is a part of her seasonal quartet. And I already got started in this novel. This is a story that follows a old man and a young girl in the summer. It travels between their lives and is kind of focuses on fall as well as summer. I don't know. What I do know is it's a story about friendship and seasons and time and how time kind of changes but also shows the patterns of our lives and I've heard that it's a really great first part of the series. I'm really interested in getting started with it and if you've read the rest of the seasonal quartet you can let me know in the comments below if I should keep going. I've kind of heard some mixed reviews on um, people not liking the rest of the series as much as they like Autumn. So let me know what your thoughts are and if I should continue. Another YA book that I picked up is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. So I recently finished uh, Stephen King's Carrie. I was really excited to hear that uh, Jackson, a couple years ago, released this book and it's gotten a lot of acclaim for it and when it came out I was really excited to read it but I wanted to read Carrie first and this Halloween I finally read Carrie and I have some thoughts about it so if you want me to do my review on Stephen King's Carrie I can definitely let you know my thoughts but I'm really excited to see Jackson's take especially because there are so many new takes that Jackson um, takes in her novel. How many times can I say takes? But apparently the main character of this story, her name is Madison. And so this main character, Madison, lives in a small town and I believe it's in the same time period as Carrie. So 60s, 70s. And Madeline is passing for white. She's biracial and she passes as white. Then the town kind of finds out and chaos ensues. This is a story about race and fitting in and class. I think it's gonna be a really interesting uh, juxtaposition and commentary to the themes that King had in his original novel. Another book that I picked up is If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. Now this has been uh, circulating a bookstagram for a while and I kind of finally um, was succumbed to the influence of the influencers. Now what really drew me to Escoffrey's 
book is, um, I believe that this is a collection of stories that are intertwined, one family and their kind of life in Miami. The beauty as well as the terrifyingness of what living in Florida is like. And it's all about race and class as well as living through natural disasters. I've heard really amazing things about Scott Free's writing and his kind of use of family saga in these um, short stories that are all connected. I'm really, really excited, especially to read more uh, Florida, Florida stories. Another book that kind of talks about identity and belonging that I picked up is this memoir by Lamia H. Uh, hijab butch blues. Now this is a coming of age memoir. This focuses on Lamia H's story as a young Muslim girl kind of coming to terms with her identity both in her religion as well as her sexuality as well as her family kind of moving around the world. I'm really excited to read this book. I've heard that it's a really intense and also moving memoir and I haven't read a memoir in a while and I'm going on a pretty long car trip this coming weekend uh, for Thanksgiving Day festivities so I'm going to try to find the audiobook as well so I can kind of listen along. I'm one of those unfortunate people who can't read in the car. I get really car sick. So hopefully I can find the audio version of this book so that I can listen. I love the audio versions of memoirs. Speaking of love, I'm going to end my haul with Monica Ali's Love Marriage. Now I read her other novel that was uh, shortlisted for the Booker Prize. That was Brick Lane, which came out. We'll put the year somewhere over here. Apparently this focuses on a love marriage. Now love marriages are different from arranged marriages in that they are as the name implies. Anyway, so this book focuses on a young South Asian family and a young girl as she kind of grapples with her love marriage and arrangement and how her choice in her partner kind of really brushes up against her family's expectations and wishes. I'm really intrigued to see how Ali kind of goes against the typical kind of tropes of this narr narrative and if she does. Um, I haven't heard a lot of reviews on, on this book so I'm excited to give it a go and see what my take on it is. Anyway, that has been a little bit of what I have on tap to read uh, in the next couple of weeks. I am not gonna lie, I feel like this past couple of weeks I've kind of been playing catch up with my brain and my reading and I've been really trying to find joy in books again. I feel like ever since I feel, felt settled in my move, there has been kind of a joy in where I am, but not a joy in the reading. And maybe that's because reading for a while has been all about escape, and now that I feel like I don't need to escape where I'm at, it's it's harder to feel settled in the things that I used to do that brought me joy. Maybe that's, maybe that's too much. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how this batch of books goes, and hopefully they'll bring me out of my slump. I'm cautiously optimistic. Is this video in focus? I am less cautiously optimistic and maybe optimistically pessimistic. We will see. This has been this week of Dog Yard Musings. I'm Monica. Happy reading.